All right, this is Frank Tamar. We're going to go right in to the news right now. A few days ago, I, I did a seminar and uh, in Palm Springs, and in that seminar, I gave all the information connecting the Psalm 83 war uh, and also the Ezekiel war, which we find in chapter 38 and 39. And what I'm going to do today is add a little bit more of that information that... Uh, uh, information that shows the path of going to the Psalm War and the Ezekiel War. I'm going to build on what I showed in the seminar and some of the warnings that I told the people in that seminar. And of course, in the last days, we know that Israel is going to be the center, the focus point of the last days. God will be dealing with the nation of Israel. And of course, we know from Zechariah 12:3 that all the people of the world will be coming against Israel. And so that's why I start just about every post now with what's going on in Israel because it points to two wars, major wars that haven't been fulfilled yet, but they are going to be fulfilled very, very soon. Now, you're going to see the names of the nations here, uh, Jordan, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Syria, the Palestinians. Now, in this area, when you do a breakdown, you'll see the Hamas, the Fatah, the Hezbollah, uh, the Palestinians, those that are uh, the factions within the Palestinians. So what I'm going to do, and then also in Ezekiel chapter 38, we see Russia, we see Sudan. Uh, you see Sudan right here, Russia's in it. And the reason why I'm mentioning this, you'll see Ethiopia, because there's also news about these nations today as well. So what I want to do is go back, I'm going to play you uh, a film here, a video, if you will. Uh, a few days ago when I gave the seminar, I told the people you will see the rockets continually to fall on Israel because the Palestinians want Israel to attack them. That's their plan. And in my my seminar a couple days ago, I showed them the plan. It w I gave you the documents. And if you want those documents, go to my October 31st post and watch those four videos you'll see the breakdown of what the plan was for the Palestinians back in 2011 number one was the fact that they were going to have a missile barrage going into Israel to force Israel to come and attack them then they were going to go to the UN and get uh, and make chatter for the for the whole world to boycott Israel and to come against them and try to make them a nation. And of course, every part of that plan is in effect. And when you take a look at this, when I warned the people a few days ago, now we see more rocket fire. And here's just an example of it. They're not going to stop. I don't care how many times they tell you they're going to have a ceasefire. It's not going to stop. They have a plan. And their plan is to the destruction of Israel. We Everybody should get just put that in your head, man, because these things are not going to stop. They're going to keep coming. So let's move on to Egypt now because Egypt is also mentioned in the Psalm 83. And back in December of 2011, the last part of December when Egypt was falling apart, I explained to those at that seminar yesterday, or a couple days ago that the Lord had placed on my heart exactly what was going to take place this year. And it happened. I told the people that the Muslim Brotherhood would be elected even before they went into the elections and they have become uh, the new government now. I also said that they were going to install Sharia law and take a look at this. This builds on my case from two days ago, October 31st, when I gave my presentation, it was I believe on the 28th in Palm Springs. Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood says new constitution must be based on Islamic law. So there's really not other uh, other information that I can give to you on that. You can read the article for yourself. I do have a little bit of, of it up here. But as you can see, they're committed to enshrining is Islamic Sharia law as the main source of the new constitution. So I'm really paying attention when the Lord shows me things and he lays it on my heart. I'm 
putting it on my website. It's still there. Uh, I would recommend that you watch those, that four-part series from my uh, posting of October 31st. It really will, is an eye-opener when you see the things that uh, were shown to me and now they actually take place because it was something that blew me away. I've been watching for the these things and now they're already here. So here's another article, October 31st, 2012. Hezbollah is another one of those countries that are named in the Psalm 83, and that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. Hezbollah reportedly installs the surveillance cameras network along the Israeli border. Israel expert says that the Shiite group hyperactivity in recent weeks, including its dispatch of a drone over Israel, suggests a preparation for conflict. And believe me, it is going to be a major, major conflict. At the end of the day, you are going to see Psalm 83 war come into fruition. And of course, if you're new to my site, go to my website, BibleProphecyMan.com. You'll be able to click the link like this, and you'll be able to go right towards the link. Now let's move to another one. Hezbollah latest muscle flexion shows it is under duress and looking for a fight. Again, a prelude to the Psalm War. Let me, we'll pull this up for you. And this is the article that I just read to you, but now it's in full blown right here at the original source. And these are the Israelis who are in the Lebanese, they have, they're holding the Lebanese flag. Uh, they've had the skirmishes you see below that says the Israeli, excuse me, Israeli soldiers and the Lebanese and Hezbollah flags returning from southern Lebanon uh, in the last day of 2006. Now, 2006, they, the Israelis had to go in and lead cast, it's called lead cast, that operation to go into Lebanon to stop what took place after 7,000 rockets were sent in by the Palestinians from the Gaza Strip, which are mentioned in the Psalm 83 war, by the way. And uh, so they, they invaded southern Lebanon, and this is when they were coming back. Now, we're getting to that point again, and this is, again, part and parcel for Mark 13:8, the birth pangs of the last days. The Lord said that that's what was going to be like as a woman who's going to be carrying a child. The birth pangs are starting to ratch up again. So I'm not going to repeat myself here because essentially that's what it says in this article here. They sent in, the Hezbollah had sent in drones. Uh, they're using this communication to set up and they believe, the Israelis believe that they're doing it because there's going to be another conflict. And I would have to agree with them, especially when the Lord showed us that this is what was going to happen in the last days. So here we go, it's breaking news, this came out. The, uh, the Sinai Salafists continue to threaten Israel. Egypt is in the Psalm 83. So let me go to this one. Monitoring worship, uh, let's see. We just have to wait and see what, if I can pull it up here. And I don't have that. But let me read it. I'll read it right from here. Here's the link. You can get it from the Jerusalem Post. It says, Security and increasing lawlessness, Sinai Palenza, continue to be pressing issue for both Egypt and Israel this week with the threats of both countries from the Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda hates Israel, and they're doing whatever they can to destroy Israel. Al-Qaeda... Uh, affiliated Salafist Jihad, Jihad would be a, uh, a war, a group who have found fertile breeding grounds in the Sinai Peninsula since the Egyptian Revolution. On Thursday, Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood affiliated Freedom and Justice Party, but which by the way is also pushing for the Sharia law, demanded that law enforcement authorities must remove or must move to regain control of the security in the Sinai, following weeks of reports of terrorist activity in the troubled peninsula. Over the past months, Al-Qaeda-linked groups have conducted a series of deadly terrorist attacks against both Egyptian and the Israeli interests on the border, including September 21st shooting that killed 20-year-old 20 20 -year Israeli corporal. 
So again, just more signs of the birth pangs, Egypt being in the throng of it, and uh, it will, it is coming. And I'm just continue to give you the signs every single day if I have to, or at least I'm trying to give them every single day, but you're seeing them in the news, and I would just want to make sure that you have a connection uh, because most people who don't read the Bible are not going to know uh, why this news is so important. Now, this is important. Abbas, who is the leader of the organization of the Palestinians, is calling for negotiations with Israel uh, in the 1960, or this says 67 borders, but 1967, that's the war that the Palestinians were involved with, with some of the other Arab countries against Israel. Israel won. They claim land. East Jerusalem uh, was part of that land, and now the Palestinians want it back. And so it says this, the Palestinian Authority, President Hamad Abbas, called on the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Tuesday, excuse me, Thursday, and that would be today, to return to the negotiations tables and discuss the two-state solution based on the 1967 borders. This is from Channel 2. Now, what's important to understand here is 1967, East Jerusalem was taken by Israel. The Prime Minister of Israel said, we're never going to give this land back. It's, it, you, it can't be in the negotiations, but Abbas tries to keep pressing on this issue, and all it does is create tensions. Now, in an interview set for air Friday on Channel 2, Abbas also vowed that as long as he is the PA president, there will be no third infantada. And let me tell you, just like I said back in December of 2011, it is a lie because you're going to see more rockets, more mortars, and more conflicts in the next couple months and in next year, if it lasts that long before the Psalm 83 war, you will see what I'm talking about. Now, we don't want to use terror. We don't want to use force. Well, just in the last two weeks, they've sent over 70 rockets now into Israel. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu knows this is force. This is aggression by the Palestinians and the Palestinian leader is Abbas and he's the one that's saying that we're not going to be doing terror? Come on, we got to wake up here. They say one thing and they do the other. And they call for a peace and then within half of a day they send in more rockets. So we know that it's all a facade. Here's another one. The Palestinian economy is teetering on the brink of a collapse, the study says. So let's go to that article. I'm pretty sure I have that here. Okay, there it is. And this is going to be important, and I'll tell you why. This article, from here down, is really not too much. Uh, it's just talking about individuals who are having hardships. Uh, the Palestinians, there's a 20-year-old they're talking about that's having problems. But the, the meat of the subject goes here. It says, for the past, or for the best part of the past 16 months, the Palestinian Authority failed to pay on the wages of more than 200,000 public sector employees. The delays in the salary payments are caused by delays in the transfer to the Palestinian Authority of emergency aid funds and the Palestinian tax revenues collected by Israel on the behalf of the Palestinian Authority. The economic implications of the situation are far-reaching and disastrous, argues this economist. Yekir Gall in a report prepared by him for the monthly e-newsletter and this is was issued here in September issue uh, published by the Tel Aviv University Moshe Dayan Center of the Middle Eastern and African Studies under the heading of the Palestinian Economic Crisis a loud wake-up call the situation is liable to have disasters disastrous and I didn't put this in blue they did that's how important they uh, think that this is. Disastrous social and political consequences due to the fact that the Palestinian public sector employees, including the security establishment personnel, account for well over a quarter of the Palestinian purchasing power. Their low salaries are a mainstay of the economic and social stability in the West Bank. As these salaries have not been paid on time and in full, 
The report explains the economic security and the public sector employees is undermined and the shock waves spread to the West Bank society at large. Furthermore, many of these public sector employees are unable to meet bank loan repayments and devastating effect felt throughout the financial system. And then you can go on, it says the purported economic growth has been nothing but a fleeting mirage. Now, why is this so important? Well, let me show you here. Let me go back to my site for a second here. We'll scroll down here. Let me pull this up here because it, it's not in order, but I wanted to show you this. There's an article that talks about the PA, the Palestinian Association, or this is uh, Abbas's, he, that's who he's ahead of, seeks November UN vote on the status bid. Now, one of the reasons why they want to do this is because if they become a member, the IMF has to give them money. And since they're in a dire straits right now, they need this UN vote. Now, in order to recognize the, the land of the Palestinians, if they do recognize them, that causes problems for Israel because then they're, they're talking about land that the Palestinians uh, are currently on that is really owned by Israel, and it can cause major, major problems and even a war. Palestinian Eye, November 15th and the 29th as possible dates for the votes of the status upgrade bid in the United Nations, Israel's attempting to block move. And obviously because they don't want their land divided. And they're not going to let their land be divided, that's for sure. Now this was part of the, as I said earlier in this uh, video, that that was part of the 2011 plan, the Palestinian plan. They're sending over the rockets, and now they're they're going to the UN at the same time that their economy is in shambles. So we see tensions mounting. They have to do something, otherwise, this uh, these problems are going to spill over into different areas. The Palestinian the Palestinian Authority wants to present the UN General Assembly uh, with another bid for a status up, upgrade. Now Ramallah's reporting IN November 15th and the 29th of its goal dates for the vote. If the UN approves the vote or the bid, the PA would be upgraded from observer status to non-member and this is the progression that they want to go because once they get recognized big trouble for Israel because all of the world at that point will start focusing on Israel to try to get them out of the land and when that happens you know war is coming. Now Palestinian President Ahmad Abbas sought to have the UN vote on the bid during September's assembly in New, in New York but eventually deferred it over the U.S. administration's request to wait until the presidential elections were over. And now, guess what? The election today is the first. The election's five days away, and this is why Abbas is going. He knows that he has short fuse time and his, his nation is falling apart. And while the Palestinian leaders has yet to finalize the request, the two dates considered hold special significance. On November 15, 1988, Yasser Arafat declared Palestinian independence in Algeria, while on November the 29th, 1947, was the date in which the UN voted to accept the, parti the uh, partition plan for Palestine. November 29th is also the International Day of Solidarity Palestinian People, an anniversary adopted by the UN General Assembly in 1977. So these have specific dates, and he's very, very wise. But one thing you should know, Abbas may be wise, but everything that he's doing is leading right to the fulfillment of what God said was going to happen in that Psalm 83 war. So it won't matter if they get this ob observative status or not. The outcome will be war. And that's determined by uh, God in his scripture. We know that already. So let's uh, move down here and uh, we'll go into another article. We'll just go right into uh, 
Let me pull this up for you. And this is, this is the article, the 1967, which I just covered. And then we'll come down here. And it says the, is, the Sinai Salafists continue to threaten Israel, Egypt security. And again, I'm going to have this link post at my site. Egypt is in the Psalm 83, uh, dealing with the Muslim Brotherhood, as I showed you before. So let's uh, continue on with uh, some more of the news here. Let me get right back to my site. Excuse me, just, just a second here. And uh, now this is another prophecy, and of course it does deal with one of the nations that are in the Psalm 83 war. Uh, very, very important. And that, you know, just like Egypt here, what's going on with the Sharia law in Egypt. And the U.S. is also uh, monitoring Iran ships that were docked in, in uh, Sudan. Now, Sudan is in the Ezekiel War under the name of Kush. And so, uh, last week, Israel bombed Sudan. They hit a nuke, or the, uh, the uh, depot there of ammunitions that the uh, are munitions that the Iranians had in Sudan. Israel took it out, and now the Iranians sent their ships in that area. The Israelis were monitoring that. When you click this link, you'll read all about that. But it just goes to show you that not only is the Psalm 83 war coming into uh, play, the puzzle coming together, but also the nations in Ezekiel of which. Sudan and Iran both are mentioned in that war. Now one of the blessings that we see from Ethiopia, which is also one of the nations in the Old Testament that we find in Ezekiel chapter 38 that will be coming against Israel. And one of the things I thought about, look at you have the blessing, and here is from my book. Let me get right to my book, you see a big picture, chapter 9, A Nation Reborn. And this is a prophecy about the Lord saying that when Israel was born, he was going to bring people from all over the world, the Jews that were cast out. They're going to be coming back in the last days. You'll see the prophecy here. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will bring my people, uh, Israel and Judah, back from captivity and restore them into the land that I gave their forefathers to possess. So, says the Lord, and you'll see this, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 3. Do not be afraid, for I am with you, and I will bring your children from the east and gather them from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And now get this now, because this is what I'm going to report on. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory. So in my book, when you scroll down, you're going to see that I list all the different nations that have been coming uh, out of their own nations and going into Israel. And I also gave you some information about Ethiopia. All right, you'll see Ethiopia right here, mentioned right there. And I give you what's been going on over the years. I give you a timeline. You'll see in 1998 how the... Ethiopians were being brought back under the operation of Solomon. How many people that they took from the south? Keep that in mind. The Lord said he was going to take them from the south. Ethiopia is definitely from the south, and they were taking the people out. So there was other news in 1999 and the year 2000, 2003, where more Ethiopians were coming out from the south as a fulfillment of prophecy. But what I wanted to show you now is the new article that just came out, the last uh, information that I just pulled, which was yesterday. There's another group of Ethiopians that are coming out. Israel this week officially launched the Operation Dove to bring home the last of the Mur, are part of the Ethiopian tribe that long went by the name of Beta Israel, the House of Israel. Sometimes during the past two centuries, the large number of the Beta Israel tribesmen converted to Christianity. For some of the conversion was forced, for others adopted Christianity 
was the only way to gain full human rights. And between now and March of 2014, Operation Dove will see the remainder of those Ethiopian Jews return to their land to their forefathers. What a blessing that is. I mean, could you, what a blessing that is. Let me see if I can pull that up. I may have it on this section here. which I don't have it but I do have the link so when you click the link you'll be able to see that this this is uh, from my book and this is from the link itself which I just read and I just put this information a uh, file this information that you'll have it in the last Chronicles of Planet Earth so look what the Lord is saying look what he's doing he said that he was going to show us the things that were going to take place before they took place and we're seeing the exact thing happen that he said so what part of the Holy Spirit are you rejecting here what part of the message of the Lord are you rejecting I hope none I hope that you're taking it all in and you're saying my God this is the truth it's actually happening and you'll be giving your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ now moving on to something completely different I wanted to show you what was going on some devastating uh, pictures in Luke 21 25 it says that there was there shall be signs in the Sun and the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations why look at this with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring huge storms the waves pushing these tides and pushing the waves I mean just in battling the coastlines not just in the United States but many many places around the world causing many many complex problems we're seeing it take place it's happening right before us so take a look if you will at the headline it says after the storm true now let me go right to it here I want to make sure that you see this all right, this was the headline that I took. After the storm, true scale of Sandy's dev devastation across the eastern seaboard merges as death toll hits 50 and damage set to top $50 billion. America, if you have been watching my post, if you've been listening to my warnings, what did I tell you last year and the year before and the year before? If you think that you saw storms, that were bad you haven't seen anything yet there was going to be more storms there are going to be devastating storms they would be happening more frequently and I told you when the destruction happens it's going to wreck the economy you're going to see billions of dollars worth of damage and that's exactly what we are seeing now it's happening when the United States economy is at a standstill and they had over a 16 trillion dollar debt and what do you think a 15 billion dollar bill is going to do it's just showing us that the curse has not been lifted and President Obama it is he has been trying to divide Israel he's taken sides with the Palestinian trying to give East Jerusalem back to the Palestinians and he's caused the uh, curse to fall on America and this is one of the reasons I believe that America is being pummeled one after another by either storms or droughts I mean just check it out all these facts are in my book but take a look at some of these devastating pictures and if you watched America uh, good morning America today you saw some news about it but let me show you some of the pictures that came off of this site this looks like something that came out of the tribulation but the Lord told us in Mark 13 8 it was going to happen as a woman with birth pangs okay in first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 Paul also warned about the labor the woman like a labor and this is take a look at this this looks like Nagasaki for crying out loud this is a this is exactly what the Lord said Com complex problems people without electricity people without their homes you're talking thousands and thousands of Americans who can't go home anymore to these things you even have homes that are they're still standing but the gas lines are severed the electrical uh, it is the electricity is severed it looks like Nagasaki it looks like if you will it looks like Japan of March of a few years ago 
or last year when that tsunami hit and it devastated. It looks almost like that. These are horrendous pictures, lives turned upside down, loss of property, billions of dollars in, in uh, debt going to be uh, forged on America. Look at this. And the Lord said complex problems. Would you call this, let me ask you a question, would you call this a complex problem? If you say no, I can honestly say you need to see a doctor because you don't live in reality. Just check these out. And again, these are taken right off the site. And oh man, I, you, what we need to do is pray that the Lord reinstall someone in this government who will lift the curse off the United States. And the only way that that's going to happen is if a new leader comes into play and will not try to separate the Palestinian or uh, the Israeli land and give it to the Palestinians and will stop burdening them themselves over Jerusalem like President Barack Obama's doing. Not only did the United States get pummeled with rain, but they got smacked with bad weather and the snow and they converged. We had what they called a superstorm, the perfect storm, if you will. It just took out just about everything. The 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 tunnels were flooded. Look at this. Well, some of the water is recid, you know, recited, but uh, major, major problems. Houses just taken right off of their foundations. Unrealistic photos, and you see the mass, the massive storm that came through. And again, more pictures. It just, and this picture reminds me of an earthquake that took place after a shaking, and you're going to see more of that. Let me remind you of that put up the red flag because you're going to see more earthquakes start happening it has to because mark 13 8 the birth pangs we're, we're going to see more of those but there is hope the Lord can shine his light on a nation who blesses Israel but up until now that's not what's happening with America and I know that many of you who are watching this may not believe in that curse but you're going to see that it is in effect check these things out it's just unbelievable what I'm looking at and most of America who are seeing this uh, say that yeah, these things are unbelievable but the roaring waves and the seas there you go the Holy Spirit is showing you something that he told us a long time ago people in distress perplexity amongst the nations there you go over and over again one way there's only one way and that is through Jesus Christ. We know that from the book of John. Nobody goes to the Father except through the Son, Jesus Christ. Today is a great day of salvation, more destruction. And uh, pray for these people because their life is not going to be the same now. Everything was turned upside down with the storm. Just incredible pictures. And I'm showing you all these pictures because I really want to drive home uh, what the Lord had warned to us. Now please keep in mind, this is one prophecy. But the Lord told us in Matthew 24, 7, When you shall see all these things, know that it's near, even at the door. Our generation is the only generation who have seen all these things. Just incredible, incredible uh, insight that the Lord has given us, wisdom knowing what to look for in these last days and we're actually seeing the pictures of it let me go just scroll through these things in case you didn't get there we are closed obviously these are not good times for America but things can change the Lord can restore but he won't do it I'm telling you it's not going to happen if a president remains who tries to divide up Israel, the curse will stay with us and get worse because we're getting closer and closer to the end days. The roaring, the roaring of the seas and the waves, great illustration of the Lord's words coming to pass. 
the clouds over the city. Well, if you were in space looking from where Jesus is, you see the clouds are over America because of the curse. And not just America, but anybody who comes against his people, Israel. Jeez, the flooding. The buildings are flooding. It looks like unbelievable. They can't drink the water because of the camp contamination, the feces that are floating around. They have no electricity. They have, they're running out of food. People are becoming angry. It's just not a good time. Jeez. Look at this, again. The waves and the seas roaring. And the fires that broke out. Just unbelievable what we just got through seeing now. Could you imagine the United States, the people in the United States now, 50 to 60, and maybe even more million people have been affected by this. Could you imagine how the people in Japan felt last year when they were hit by that tsunami? Now America can understand how they felt with the complex problems and the death to the animals that took place as well. You talk about complex, could you I pray for this man because the, the lives, as I said, there's nothing to come back to. Of course, all the people that got hurt and the, the system now for the transportation system, these are complex problems. And the Lord made it, made it very, very clear. The nation's complex problems. Jeez. All right. I think that the Holy Spirit has got your attention here. And I'm praying that today would be that day which you would receive of my, my Savior, Jesus Christ. He's calling you today. He wants you out of the storm. And the storm that you're in is the storm of Satan. Satan has got your heart. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, the storm of your eternal salvation. That's what this is all about. Don't let you be hanging out alone in the storm. Jesus can pull you out of anything, including a mess like this. Nothing is going to be the same there. It's going to take a long, long time before this is ever built up again. And I'm going to stop it right here. There are other pictures, but just heed the word of the Lord the roaring of the seas and the waves with complex problems in the last days let me go back to my site and when you come down here you're gonna see the Drudge Report and the Drudge Report it gives you a whole host of different problems these complex problems that have been caused by the storm Alright, so you'll see it if you go to Drudge today, and these are the links. You can click these links. Gas shortages, the electricity shortages, fuel shortages in different places. Let me close this off. Don't know why that's coming. The commuter, the rage, people becoming enraged because they don't have enough fuel to drive around. The feds, uh, you know, problems with the, the feds are going to have to act, and we saw what happened in Katrina. And I hope they can do a better job. And now that saying that the New York City official Red Cross, absolute disgrace, compact, complex, complex problems from these storms. These are the things that the Lord said, keep on the watch for. He told us, I'm going to show you the things before they take place so that when you see them, you will know. And God has told us the truth. All, all you have to do is believe it because the God of Israel 
is the God of anyone who receives him and accepts him as the Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Give your life over to the Lord today. What, what are you waiting for? Please, I'm begging you for your own good and for your spiritual well-being, eternal life. Have your name put in the book of life today by asking Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins. Tell him that you love him. Tell him that you, Lord, you want to be forgiven. Ask him to write your name in his book of life. Tell him that you accept the gift of salvation, the free gift that you can earn, as it says in the Ephesians. It's a free gift. You can't do anything to earn the gift. He gave it to us. That gift was hanging on the cross, shedding the blood for us. Please, today, give your life over.